and we are starting in the city of Waterdeep. So, anybody know what a uh, Winterdeep's nickname is? Anybody know what a uh, Winterdeep? The city, city, city of Splendor. Oh man, you guys are good. You guys know that it's the city of splendor. All right. Well, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of information. Uh, we're going to use the uh, well. I'm going to use the 3.5 lore for Waterdeep until something comes out uh, in 5.0. So the as you guys know, popul the population is massive of water in Waterdeep. It is 100,000 during the winter and the spring, and then the population burst up to over 500,000 during the summer months. Uh, the ruler is Paragon, the Paladinson, and there are also two, uh, 20 hidden lords, which are, you know, they're the lords behind the mask. Then the, the main deity of the entire city is Tyr. Although there are many other deities, the most represented deity is Tyr. Uh, there are several routes to and from Waterdeep. There is the High Road, the Long Road, the Tradeway, and the East Trail. And on another note, there is another, there is a fifth one uh, which runs along the, the very, very edge of the water uh, as you see where the P is in Waterdeep. There's also a another small road that runs uh, about two or three miles uh, and then it connects, I, I believe, is what the, uh, I think it's the, the long road. And then uh, we know that Waterdeep has massive water trade routes uh, with Neverwinter, Baldur's Gate, and a lot of the uh, archipelagos get their supplies from Waterdeep as well. Uh, some of you may know that there are many portals within Waterdeep that will take you throughout the realms of of throughout the Forgotten Realms and also within the Inner Mountain, which is a 23 level dungeon. It was 20, but now supposedly it's 23 level. Last time I read Inner Mountain was 20, but now it's 23. So the main actually, there's no real primary. I guess you could say a primary economy. That, you know, that's driven in economy. It's 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 so diverse with all trades. And there are many, many, many guilds. There's a guild for any type of trade within Waterdeep as well. Uh, as for armed forces for the city, it is very heavily armed with the Griffin Cavalry. Basically, is a uh, uh, sort of like a it's it's an air cavalry. They they ride griffins around and uh, tour around the lands and protect Waterdeep from the air. Then there's the city guard, the primary city guard. Uh, then there's also the city, massive city navy that they have. There's also s local city watches. And then there's the Greyhands, which are elite high-level adventurers. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the guilds, you can join guilds. There are guilds for any type of craft, like I previously had mentioned. So if you're interested, maybe we can work that in down the line. Uh, and that's going to be about it for the backstory of Waterdeep. Now, now what I want everyone to do is we have several backstories tonight, and we will go ahead and start with uh, Gim Stoneheart. You can go ahead and give us your backstory real quick and tell us a little about your dwarf. Uh, Gim comes from a very small. Uh rural dwarven clan um, that's, um, you know, uh, it, it's more of a uh, very, very held to old customs, so it's a very, you know, they put customs, you know, uh, basically as a forefront of, in front of uh, almost everything else in society, so it's like the best, uh, whatever's best for the, for the clan is best for the, uh, best for the dwarf itself, um, so it's more of an understanding that decisions are based on community as opposed to individuals, um, but uh, he grew up um, not really having a good relationship with his father. Um, he did have, you know, his father was very hard on him. Uh, kept a lot of, kept pushing him and pushing him and pushing him, and never really showed him, uh, you know, any 
uh, any appreciation, never showed any pride in what he was doing, um, just continued to push him no matter how well he did. Um, and while it paid off in the end, um, you know, Gim became a very uh, a proficient fighter, uh, very proficient at, uh, at tracking in the areas around and became a very uh, a, a huge benefit to the small clan that he was in. Um, you know, he was off uh, as he started to, you know, sort of gain in, in his abilities, he went off and sometimes went too far off uh, away from the clan and doing his, his scouting and checking the area for uh, potential attacks and tracking to see whether, whether their movements were. And while he was out a little bit too far, the village was actually attacked. Uh, when he returned um, from, his, uh, from his excursion, so to speak, he, uh, he found out that his father had been killed uh, in the attack. And it's just, you know, drove him, drove him to tears. He was just, you know, heartbroken over the whole thing. And his mother finally explained to him that, you know, the whole reason that he'd been so hard on him was for his own benefit, and how proud he'd been in him, which broke his heart even more, uh, and made him want to go back out after uh, the creatures who had attacked the village, um, and the elders, knowing that he was, uh, he had so much potential, uh, sent him out uh, away from the clan to collect and. Uh, collect information about the area, to collect you know information about old customs, old magic, um, to find some of the you know the ancient dwarven ruins to try to bring something back to the clan so that they could uh, mount an you know mount an offensive against uh, against those who had attacked them. So what he uh, the real the, the real instance behind it was that they were just trying to get him away because they knew he had so much potential and they didn't want him to run off and get himself killed uh, trying to avenge his father right away. Uh, but that was sort of the story that they had told him. So as a as a result, he's been off um, kind of finding his way, collecting uh, information that he can, um, and to uh, try to try to find things to bring back to the clan magic or uh, information about where to you know where he might where they might find something to help uh, defend and attack against those who are who are attacking them. So he just has been in, in a lot of times just wandering around from town to town trying to find a place. Uh, he's found a lot of work in, in basically being able to track people down. That's his, his profession, what he was trained to do uh, in the Dwarven Clan. So he's found a lot of opportunities in what you would call bounty hunting. Um, he basically is very, very keen at being able to track down. I think I lost Chris. Yeah, he, yeah, uh, yeah. He cut out. Yeah, I don't hear him either. You give him a second. Sounds like a pretty cool dwarf. Oh yeah. You back there, uh, Gim? Yeah, I'm still here. If uh, you guys can't hear me, it's because of my connection. Yeah. Uh, like, didn't you say you were from the thun You were from the Thunder Peaks, right? Yep. Okay. Um. Yep. Yeah, I had that written down. I couldn't remember if it was from the Thunder Peaks or not. All right, well, we got it. Uh, I think you said that you were in Neverwinter basically just tracking down people because that's what your, one of your, you know, your sub-skills is, is tracking people down. So I think that's where you end up. Uh, he ended just, up he's been off. going from town to town. Yeah, he's been going to town to town and just found that, you know, there's a lot of people that need to be tracked down it just, it just fit for him so that's what he's been doing uh, just as he's entered in go on to uh, the next person I want to go ahead to introduce her characters is uh, Aeroth Allerman. I hope I said that right. Close enough. Uh, Aerith Allermain. I was going to say Allermain. God damn it. <laughs> it's all good, dude. Fucking elves. 
<laughs> hey, if we're not <laughs> difficult, we're not doing it right. Right. Uh, Aerith is, uh, he's, uh, your normal, very, uh, charismatic and, uh, wonder-lusted, uh, kind of elf. He, uh, he has his own little set, uh, set of, uh, morals that he likes to live by, and more often than not, those get him in trouble. Uh, he was, despite his young age, he was a former captain of the, uh, Coronel's Guard in Mithdraenor, which is like the ruler, and uh, he was set up by uh, another high-ruling class, a uh, high-ruling family, because he was uh, in love with uh, the elf maiden who was promised to the, uh, the guy in the high-ruling family. So the uh, Shadowglade family sets him up, makes it look like he's working with a uh, the orc cords that are in encroaching on Mithdraenor. So, uh, Aerith is, uh, like, banished from the city, and, uh, he is forced to leave all that he's ever known and all that he's ever loved, and he comes to Waterdeep, and he meets a plucky little halfling by the name of Drake Ironmouse, who proceeds to get him in trouble, but, uh, offers him a lot of information, and, uh, uh -huh. A lot of opportunities for work in the City of Splendor. And uh, he spent all of his time in Waterdeep and the surrounding cities building up a little bit of cash, a little bit of influence, and planning his revenge on the, uh, the family that spurned him. Alright. Thank you, Mr. Aerith. Now we need a uh, Rhiannon. Go ahead and give us your backstory, Rhiannon. Rhiannon is our mage. All right, uh, Rhiannon. Uh, Rhiannon Dawn Treader is also from Mithnor, and actually she is the elf maiden that Aerith All Remain was in love with, and she was actually forced <laughs> to leave Mithnor after discovering that. Her grandfather was actually a key uh, instigator of that whole plan to exile Arath. And so she had a big falling out with her grandfather and basically left. And she had always been kind of like the family <clears throat> prodigy. They, were, they had a lot of hope for her because she was a very skilled mage and very, uh, she knew a lot. You know, she was a bookworm and all that, everything. So, she left, she wandered for a time and actually ended up in Cormir where she studied with a war wizard. And basically that's what she spent most of her time doing after leaving home. Alright. And then she is on to Waterdeep to find her love I would take it. Yes, because actually her family, or the other family, the Shadow Glades, tracked her down, and so she had to leave Suzale. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and we have uh, Jeff. Jeff is a uh, fill in for uh, one of our warriors tonight. So, Jeff, why don't you give us your, your backstory for your, your half orc there? Let's do it. Well. Jeff the Half Orc is more than just a human and half orc. He was born of the unthought of union of a spectacularly built male orc uh, and a wood elf against the wood elf's will. Enough said. Uh, at his <laughs> birth, Jareth's mother, Kaylin, requested her brother take care of her. Yeah, well, my uncle took care of me because uh, mom died in childbirth. And uh, at the behest of an entire group of wood elves in the Moonwood, uh, that we just stayed on the fringes so that we didn't get any trouble since uh, orcs aren't particularly well liked, even half orcs. And, and s throughout my uh, growing up as a little, little child, my uncle kept thinking of why he even took care of me. After all, I kept getting in fights with all the other little kids. 
kick the crap out of them. Till one night, I saved a. <laughs> ah, that's. What I saved a particularly wounded fawn from a pair of dangerous looking wolves with particularly red eyes. With a short sword in my hand that I stole from the little hut that my uncle and I were staying in. And that's when he thought, you know what? I can raise this little bastard. He might know what to do. <laughs> Please Stop. continue, Jeff. <laughs> Please continue. Well, so he thought, you know what? Let's start training him in some weapons in nature. So he, so my uncle and I, uh, his name's Hayen, or Ayan, uh, took me up into the mountains. By the what mountain? Ne I think it's Nether Mountains. Smacking his gums every time he, every time he talks, it's funny. Yes, the Nether Mountains. And, uh, it was 15 years of fun. And my most of my training involved a pole arm since uh, I was a half orc. I didn't have a problem with strength. It's going to be a pretty fun little thing. And they also brought up some educational books in a chessboard so that I could uh, try and get rid of that little stereotype of half orcs being dumb. So, uh, a more mature Jeff with a tall and superbly muscular build started his adventure out of the nether mountains towards the western coast after deciding uh, the life of a uh, wood elf wasn't his cup of tea he didn't want to stay in that village where he'd probably get uh, spat at so he just gave a bear hug to his uncle and started jogging Fire the half <laughs> uh... side part is uh... he almost cried <laughs> <laughs> when he had to leave his uncle. Oh, silly half work. That's a statement and that's you, not said often. Then you roll it off the water deep? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, as I decided on shortening my name to Jeff so that I could just uh, answer short questions and get out of people's way so I wouldn't possibly get attacked. All right, thank you, Jeff. Now we'll have no a couple problem. more. We we'll also have a thank you, Eric, for playing tonight with little or no notice, and also oh, no uh, problem. Also, uh, <laughs> we'll uh, see how it goes. Maybe you know, maybe you might want to, you know, join up the group, and we're gonna play every Friday night. Well, every, I'm sorry, every Saturday night from about ten to one, and. You know, if you like uh, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, if you think it's uh, something you might want to continue playing, well, we'll fit you in. And then we have uh, right. we have a uh, clerk. Uh, you Our want clerk? me to read the backstory? Yeah, you can go ahead and read the backstory. Oh, I didn't know there was a backstory on it. Yeah, he's going to be he's playing gonna, Will. He's going to be playing Will. His, he has like a paragraph written. Um, yeah, anyways, for Will Iron Forge is a dwarf from the North Wall. He was a blacksmith for his clan. And uh, one day his clan was slaughtered. The majority of his clan was slaughtered by goblins. Wow. And Will barely made it out alive. He lost uh, both of his parents and his two sisters in battle. Oh. And he left Northwall seeking a new home. Poor bastard. And uh, he found his way to Waterdeep where he became a part time blacksmith and full time sword for hire. Nice. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I didn't even know he had anything in there, so appreciate it, Eric. And then we have, uh, uh, we have uh, Lormar, our cleric, and Lormar uh, has amnesia right now, so we'll have a uh, we'll have a backstory <laughs> for him uh, next week. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm gonna give you a give you guys a map of Waterdeep. This is the map of Waterdeep of the entire city. As you guys, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but the uh, city of Waterdeep is actually a really large city. As I said earlier, it has 100,000 people during the spring and the winter. And then during the summer months, everybody flocks to Waterdeep because I guess the the trade and, and the weather uh, goes over 500k. Uh, there are six wards within 
Waterdeep. There is the Sea Ward, which if I'm not mistaken, it is this area here that I'm highlighting on the map. And the Sea Ward is pretty much Waterdeep's wealthiest district. It has all of the nobility, lots of mage towers, and lots of money. And that's pretty much the Sea Ward. And beachfront property. <laughs> yeah, that's. I think that's probably why. Then there is the North Ward, which is this area here. And the North Ward is basically home of the middle class. It has some nobles and some lesser nobles, but the majority of the population is the middle class. Then we have the Castle Ward, which I believe is right here. And the Castle Ward is where all of the city administration lies. Uh, a lot of the city administration lives there. And also it has uh, somewhat of a marketplace, and then it has also has Castle Waterdeep. And also this here is the the mountain of Waterdeep. Then we have the uh, castle, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, the trade ward, which the trade ward is this area here. And this is basically where all of the trade commerce happens. You can get anything and everything that your heart desires in the trade district. Lots of blue light specials. Now we have the dock. And red light. Exactly. Well, I'm sure there's probably a red light district. Probably not in the trade trade uh, ward. I'm thinking probably in the dock ward there's a red light district. Or maybe the south ward. But the dock ward, which is where you guys are starting your adventure, uh, this is the oldest of all the wards. And it somewhat has a, a lawless type of atmosphere. But the majority is uh, scallywags. There's also some... Uh, uh, prostitution that goes on down here, hence the red light district. And but mostly this is where you know the, the massive navy sits, and also where all of the trade commerce comes in to Waterdeep, and also exports to the other cities like Neverwinter, Baldur's Gate, and the Galapagos. Then we have the South Ward. The South Ward is by far the poorest of all the wards. This is a, uh, it's not slum like. But it is more lower class. Uh, there's just not a lot of money going on down there. Then this area right here is not a ward, but it is called the City of the Dead. And the City of the Dead is basically the cemetery for Waterdeep. This is where all of the all of the dead are buried. The majority of the dead. And that is Waterdeep. A little bit of background for you for the six different wards and now I'm going to put you into the actual dock ward itself and of course I screwed up and didn't have that Sorry guys, so I have to open this up. I was going to do that, but then I had to rush around and do some other things. So, here we are. This is the dock ward. Now you guys are basically going to be in this area right here. You guys are in a tavern called the Flying Griffin. Well, most of you are. Rihanna, Rihanna, you're not there yet. Everybody is in this tavern. It's full. It's a pretty full, you know, tavern. A lot of, you see a lot of uh, people that are not here. Uh, they're, they're basically seafarers, a lot of captains, and also uh, you are with Drake as well, and Drake is here. And a small gnome comes into the room. And the gnome walks up to Dwyvern. And Dwyvern, you actually, you recognize this. You recognize this gnome. The gnome is from the area of where you're actually from. And, uh, shit, hold on one second. 
Yeah, he's yeah, he's from a neighbor uh, neighboring rock gnome settlement that was actually allied with your clan. And his name is Bizik. And he actually finds you and he says, Where have you been, Dwivern? You find me in Waterdeep and you ask me where I've Well your mother told me that you were coming here. I've been looking for you for a week. This place is huge. Well, how did you find... I spent all my gold. That's how I found you. <laughs> well, it's good to see you. What, what, what were you looking for me for, though? <clears throat> That's a long way to travel. Must... Well, you're... You were off with a rush, and your mother forgot to give you this book. So she sent me all this way to give you this book, because she knew I would get it to you. It's your, your, old, your father's old journal, back before he settled down and had you. This is a journal that... I was reading some of it, and it's quite interesting. And it's a journal from about 40 to 50 years ago of an adventure of him and some of his other friends went on. And there's a lot of maps. There's a lot of sites. And there's a mention of a lot of money and a lot of magic and a lot of wealth. And he hands you this journal. Oh, uh, let's have it. And I'll start looking through the book. And uh, as I'm flipping through the pages, I'll ask him, I was like, well, do you, are you headed back? Uh, do you, ha you know, are you, are you staying in town or are you headed back to the... No, I'm heading back to the mountains. We're rebuilding. The orcs took us out as well. So I'm going back to my people. But your mother asked me to get this to you because she forgot to give it to you. But I really don't think she forgot because I think she was really more scared to tell you of what your father was before you actually knew him what he was. But he, he was a he was an adventurer before he had you. And that was just a part of his life that, that he really didn't want to tell you. And that's 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 how I took it from your mother. But your mom's fine. Oh, thank you so much for the news. And uh I'm gonna I'm gonna give him say five gold to help him back on his travels. I don't know how much it cost him to get here, but... Five gold, you're a cheap like ass! It. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find the appropriate amount, but I really wouldn't know how much it would cost to get back, so... He said five gold uh, will be fine. I'm just saying... Five gold will be fine. I'll get back. Bizzik will get back. Well, I so much appreciate you bringing this all the way out here and the risk that you've, you've gone through to get here. You know... Please be safe on your way back, buddy. And hey, you know, stay the night, have a meal with us. It's on me. Hang out. Be fun to get. I get the red light that. district. Yeah, I've got to go to the red light district. <laughs> <laughs> He's never making it out of water deep. All right. <clears throat> so, he gives you this journal, Gim. And it's definitely an old... It, it's actually a stone cover. This is actually a, a pretty heavy journal. It, it weighs about 20 pounds. And this is a... It's made of stone. The pages are made of stone. A lot of it is... A lot of it is etched. There's some... There's some, you know... Some paper as well. Some parchment. And it, and it talks about... A set of islands called the Whale Bones... And the whale bones are uh, a couple days' travel from here, from Neverwinter. I'm sorry, from, from Waterdeep. And it's uh, pure west. And there, there's an island. There's actually several islands. It's in the archipelagos. It's at the very northern tip of the archipelagos. And it speaks of several emerald crystals that are supposed to be powerful. And that's why the dwarves... We're going after them. Something about, you know, it, it's just 
in shorthand, you can you can understand your dad's writing, but something about you know power for the dwarves and.